business. So give somebody a high five. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Welcome to Seriously Lighthearted Yoga. Kind of final wrap-up day on contractions la, 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 in a more uh, broad sense. Remember as Kai's practicing his <laughs> tongue contractions. Strongest muscle in your body, I hear. I don't, I don't quite know how they measure that, but it is. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that seems questionable at best, but uh, that's, it I've heard true. it in multiple places. So, again, I don't know. Yeah, guys, so to, <laughs> to wrap this up a bit, there are a few things that we'd like to bring up. As Clifton mentioned at the very end of yesterday's video, all of these things are happening all of the time. So we have isometric contraction that's sort of, well, not maybe not all the time, but isometric contraction happening most of the time to keep certain joints in place, to kind of hold your skeleton where it wants to be at that moment. Uh, concentric contraction happening anytime you make a, like a large muscle or a motor movement. And then the eccentric contraction happening when you are trying to refine that movement a bit. Uh, you don't you don't ever see, well, you rarely see any of them in isolation. And knowing that you can work with all of them at the same time, knowing that your body moves and holds itself as you would like, and that you have control over all three of those is kind of what is important for your practice. So when you come onto the mat, recognize that if you want to build some strength, you can just hold a pose for a little while and that will build strength. Uh, if you want to practice the movement to build the strength, that is a different form of strength, but it will build strength as well. Uh, and then the last thing I'd like to bring up with you guys is reminding you of that, that idea that we had brought up a long, long time ago, effort and ease contracting and releasing. We did two videos on those that idea. And just remember that you do have to engage one muscle and then release another for the movement to happen. Going back to the isometric contraction, if your elbow is out in a 90 degree angle here, your tricep is a bit contracted, your bicep is a bit contracted. Both of them are holding that joint in place. And to say, open it out, your tricep has to then contract more than your bicep. And your bicep has to release more so that you can extend the or the forearm out from the body <laughs> remember that in your practices guys and bring some of this uh contraction knowledge to your practice bring it onto the mat and see what it does for you mm -hmm. yeah absolutely all of this all of this plays into it itself too you've got like kai saying effort and ease you have contraction of your muscles that we've been talking about but you also have stretching of your muscles in any given pose even yeah. if you're holding it. <laughs> I mean all of this is happening at different times there's there's certain parts on certain poses that you're contracting there's certain parts that you are then stretching it's it's a it's a constantly evolving kind of dance between your muscles and it's a pretty impressive thing when you really start to break down what's all of the little individual things that have to happen in order for you to just do downward dog it's yeah. uh, it's it's really really almost impressive like, that you yeah. can do it so be excited <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> any movement is fairly impressive <laughs> yeah be be proud that you can do it at all so anyway give somebody a high five and uh we'll see you guys tomorrow